What secret lies beneath the Earth's crust? How does the housing in the neighborhood affect the health of its residents? How do genes interact to cause significant diseases such as cancer? Questions like these have been at the heart of the Canadian Institute for Advanced Research since its founding in 1982. At that time, a group of visionaries asked a question of their own. How could Canada play a leading role in the world of intellectual investigation and discovery? The answer was the Canadian Institute for Advanced Research a new organization with an unprecedented approach to research that would help catapult Canada to the forefront of knowledge creation. The original idea was that Canada needed a place where uh, leading edge thinkers could work together and create critical mass of kind of intellectual capacity to ask big questions and to answer them here in Canada, to create something bigger than the sum of its parts by putting Canadian strengths together. We create communities without a physical space in which that community is created. That's one big difference. The other big difference is that our work in advanced research is all collaborative. So we support people who work together with other people to advance human knowledge. CIFAR has more than a dozen active research programs. Each is driven by pressing questions about society, technology, and the very nature of humanity in the universe. The questions CIFAR asks are complex and surprising. They lead to discoveries and ideas that can have a profound effect on the way people think and act all over the world. My research involves uh, a direct effort to image, to map out structures deep inside of our planet, structures that we normally cannot see, that are completely inaccessible to normal human observation. And my research is focused on the use of earthquakes, which illuminate structures inside the planet deep below the crust. And my efforts to understand how this material functions and has moved both in the past, at the present, and indeed even in the future, will help us to unravel many of the questions that relate to the origin of some fundamental physical effects at the Earth's surface, such as the origins of earthquakes, how earthquakes evolve, what are the forces responsible for earthquakes. How does CIFAR go about answering such gargantuan questions? Working with senior academics from around the world, we identified major new research areas where Canada could and should lead the way. CIFAR then assembles an elite team of researchers whose collective expertise is ideally suited to the project. Through the Institute, this team works together for years, expanding the frontiers of human knowledge. CIFAR is driven by the principle that collective expertise creates a whole that is far more than the sum of its parts. The world is changing quite rapidly. Our, we can't continue to rely on uh, resources uh, in this country. We can't continue to be just hewers of wood and miners and the like. The world is changing and uh, the future uh, powerful economies of the world are going to depend on the creation of knowledge. And uh, Canada needs to strengthen its ability to uh, generate knowledge and that comes through uh, research and, and the educational systems and the like. We um, uh, identify some of the most important questions uh, that need to be asked to advance the world in all respects and uh, we then put enormous resources into identifying the best people from many different disciplines to uh, take those questions on, pursue them uh, for multiple years to uh, try to come up with answers that are important to uh, the world at large. Talent attracts talent. And when you are known as a place to which um, talented and able and intelligent people come, more people come to join you. And in a society in which w our growth and our development is based on more on what's between our ears than anything else, uh, it's very important for a society like Canada to have uh, really intelligent, interesting people taking intellectual risks and learning new things and bringing with them everybody else who can learn from what they learn. One of the building blocks in a successful society is successful housing in neighborhoods as far as I'm concerned. 
And uh, the reason for that is that we know that our everyday environments are fundamentally linked to the health and well-being of individuals. Affordability of housing is strongly related to health status. Things like the amount of control that you exercise over your home. I mean, our, your home is probably the most important site in your everyday life for the exercise of control. And we know that's related to health status. One recent study in New Zealand actually showed that if you provide an a standard package of insulation in homes that were previously uninsulated, it had a positive impact on health. But it was more than just respiratory health or um, people's comfort with temperature. It was actually their psychological health that improved substantially. And so it's really something about having control over your home and having a sense of comfort and having your home be a place of refuge that seems to be what's driving the health effect. CIFAR is a not-for-profit organization. Individuals, foundations, corporations and governments support CIFAR because of the long-term benefits for Canada and the world. Well look, I, 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 we, we Canadians have some characteristics. We, 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 we're always awed by our neighbours to the south. We always think that down there they do things better than anywhere else in the world. Uh, and, and, and I just feel good when I see an organisation in Canada doing something better than anyone else in the world. I think they are. We've discovered that most of the time, diseases like cancer are not caused by problems in single genes, but by many genes interacting to cause disease. And the way they interact to cause a, um, me to have cancer might be quite different from the way they interact to cause other people to have cancer. And so our challenge is to figure out in normal cells how all these genes interact and then how those interactions are going wrong in cancer cells. And we call that building a genetic interaction network. So really I'd say the whole field is only about five years old and we're fairly far along in building genetic interaction maps for very simple systems, like the budding yeast, which is one of the systems we're using, but we're not very far along in building genetic interactions to other systems. So that's a major challenge of our genetic networks group, is to take what we learn in these simple systems and transport that knowledge into more complex systems. Our goal is, uh, currently, is within the next year to basically complete a genetic interaction map for yeast. So this is the simplest cell that's sort of like human cells. And we can do that. I think that's an attainable goal. I think it will tell us a lot. And I can't even really tell you, how, you know, all the new things that we think we're going to learn from examining this map. But there's a lot of excitement out in the community about getting access to these data and analyzing them. The more meetings I come to, the more presentations I see by researchers, the more excited I get. So what we do is build Canada's capacity. We not only made breakthroughs of understanding, we've also been able to share them in such a way as to have an impact on decision makers. We think that what we're doing is enabling the very best to be even better. In many, many fields, from genetics to superconductivity, from string theory to economic theory, the floodgates of discovery are only now beginning to open. At a time of monumental expansion of knowledge, CIFAR researchers are leading the world, setting new standards for research excellence. <laughs>